Our next presentation is Alexandra, who will be telling us about the current and future state of the CentOS Stream CI. So thank you very much, Alexandra. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone, for the talk. As I mentioned on the chat, it's 8 p.m. here on Fridays. If I forget some words, that's OK, and that's expected. Be patient. So I'm Alexandra Fedorova, and I'm principal software engineer at Red Hat. I work on uh, Fedora, RHEL, and CentOS Stream continuous integration. I'm bookworm on IRC in various channels where you can find me. I uh, previously, like in maybe last years, I was mostly active in Fedora, and this has been new experience for me to participate so actively in the CentOS project. And today I'm going to uh, talk about the CentOS Stream CI. And uh, maybe worth noting is that I'm not going to present you the working final uh, awesome solution, but I'm rather giving you an update of uh, the status of the effort, uh, what we are doing and how it looks right now and uh, what are our future plans. So let's get started and let's get started with uh, a recap picture. There's a lot of information here, but I still wanted to, like, to use it because in my talk, I will be uh, talking about CentOS Stream 9 and RHEL 9 development, and there was a lot of confusion how this is all organized and where we are. So on this diagram, uh, it we show the relationship between Fedora, CentOS Stream, and RHEL, and you can see that we have Fedora Rawhide and Fedora ELN as a rebuild of Fedora Rawhide. And then at a certain point, we had a Fedora 44 branch uh, development, and from that Fedora 44 branch, we were having bootstrap activities, which were uh, needed to like, set up the CentOS Stream code base and, and RHEL 9 code base. And now we are in the pre-release development of a central stream and RHEL 9. And uh, I want to highlight two things with this picture. First of all, is that this slide deck is basically uh, exactly the same slide deck as uh, one I'm using for internal presentations in Red Hat next week. And I'm really super glad and excited to have a possibility to discuss real nine and central stream development in the same manner publicly and internally and like work together in the proper open source way. And the second part is um, just looking at this picture, uh, I want to uh, really point out that uh, the concept of pre-release development for CentOS is something very new and maybe not all CentOS uh, users or CentOS community members have fully internalized this thing and just realized how different we are with the CentOS Stream 9. We actually have the currently the access to CentOS Stream packages and CentOS Stream infrastructure and everything for CentOS Stream 9 way before the actual release of a major um, release of RHEL. So <laughs> we already working and developing the CentOS Stream packages, uh, even though the major release of RHEL is planned for later phases. So it means that, of course, the CentOS Stream 9 state is not a fully stabilized and fully ready to be used yet. We still expect ABI changes, uh, some configuration changes, and some broken compatibility ch uh, changes. But uh, which we are setting right now is uh, like something which we will be setting for years to come. So uh, today we will be actually talking about uh, just one tiny bit of this picture, which is that little gray error between CentOS Stream 9 and RHEL 9. And for the rest of the talk, I'm just going to try to explain what this gray error actually means and why it is slightly misleading to have it as a one directional error uh, arrow. I should probably have a knot here, something something like this on that picture. So <laughs> let's take a look in it. First of all, uh, let's remind uh, ourselves 
how do we work on the Linux distribution? Uh, there are a lot of similarities with application development when you do a Linux distribution, but there's also some differences. And the unit of work in the Linux distribution is a package. And uh, Linux distribution can have, CentOS Stream 9, I think, have uh, up to 3,000 packages right now. And these packages each have its own sources and its own Git repository with the uh, source code, but we are developing these packages kind of independently, not completely, but more or less. And we treat our fl um, development flow, the contribution flow to center stream. Uh, we uh, consider the unit of work to be a package update. So in very simple terms, the update, uh, the contribution to center stream looks like uh, this. We merge code of it into a disk git repository of a component into the sources. We build a package out of these sources into in our build system, which is stream Koji. Then we test this package in our gate, uh, where we verify that necessary requirements are uh, satisfied. And then we publish this package to our repository, to our ISO, to our images, and, and so on. Of course, our life would be too simple if it would <laughs> be just this picture. So this is the actual pipeline of the central stream contribution or rel contribution, which is currently the same. And uh, um, let me maybe go through it step, step by step. So first of all, we have sources. Sources is our disk git repo of the uh, well, sources of the, of the RPM package. We have RPM spec there, tarball with uh, uh, original data and uh, patches and so on. Now we have a merge request coming to the sources repository and we have set of checks for the merge request, uh, which supposed to verify the merge request before we decide if we can merge this uh, update in the sources repository. Once we merge the update, we build it and uh, it appears in the uh, gate tag in our Koji build system. So the package gets uh, tagged as uh, C9 as gate. Uh, then uh, packages are, which are labeled with a gate tag are subject to the CI gating procedure. So whenever there is a package in the gate tag, we trigger a CI in gating for these packages, for that package specifically in the we run a set of tests, and then uh, if the tests are passing, we tag this package from the gate tag into the candidate tag. Then we have additional verification step, which works exactly the same like CI gating, but it's another step because the content of the checks which we run during this step can be different. So in CI gating, we mostly run automated tests, generic tests, uh, things which are easy to run on uh, through the automation and set and, and services. An additional verification might be something, uh, this is not very strictly defined. It can differ between different components, different maintainers, and this can, can work in various ways. Some, sometimes this uh, step is not needed. Sometimes it uh, also contains asking uh, like a friend to test this package on some uh, hardware lab which uh, need to need to be accessed and so on. And then after the additional verification, the package lands on the pending tag, uh, so it get tagged into the pending tag in Quadri. And this is where this pending tag, it is our uh, main source of uh, packages, which we consider good enough packages. And this, these packages are then used uh, in the build route so new packages will be uh, building uh, on top of this uh, content. And these packages also are used to build the repository, the images, the so-called uh, CentOS Compose. Now, this is not exactly the final step because once we build the repository and images and, and we compose, we can apply additional uh, testing, which is a CentOS QA testing, which uh, can then verify that this state of snapshot of your repository and these images are good enough and can be published for consumers. But uh, So the development pipeline on the package level looks like this. 
And uh, yeah, feel free to add questions and I hope I will have more time at the end uh, to discuss uh, this in more details. So uh, let's uh, cover the topic of merge requests first. So the merge requests are already available because our the entire uh, code base of CentOS Stream 9 is already available in the public GitLab repository. And every CentOS Stream 9 update uh, is done by a merge request on the GitLab. Again, let's pause here for a moment and just realize and recognize how big of achievement this is because <laughs> Even in Fedora, the pull request workflow, which we try to promote and, and, and accept for Fedora packages is still like far from being adopted. But in uh, CentOS Stream 9, every update to CentOS Stream comes through a merge request on GitLab and pu through public infrastructure and through the code review and uh, test process. Also, anyone can create merge request to the CentOS Stream uh, it doesn't require any spe special permissions. You can submit a, a change if you feel like uh, this is a change or worth doing in CentOS Stream 9. But uh, you need to be aware that only like RHEL developers can accept it because contribution to CentOS Stream is the contribution to RHEL. There is no difference. And uh, this is fully controlled by RHEL developers, the people who are going to maintain this contribution for the rest of uh, its uh, days. So uh, it is generally better to initiate the conversation before you really work on the merge request for CentOS Stream and uh, file a Bugzilla, take some uh, comments from RHEL developers and uh, then create a merge request references, re referencing this bugzilla and so on. Now, uh, more on the topic of checks. So we are working on these checks, but we don't f exist yet. So <laughs> the one most uh, prom uh, promising uh, effort which we're doing is we are enabling Zool CI for the center stream contributions. Uh, the, on, on slides, you can find the link for the example where you can see this Azul uh, jobs are in action. So in that demo of uh, uh, merge request, in the demo merge request, uh, we actually run a, built a mock build of the uh, RPM package of the update, and then we. Uh, plan to run at least the RPM inspect uh, job for it. It's kind of one of the easiest checks which we uh, have found and uh, we will be doing it as a first step, but we will be adding more tests in, in this framework. So Zool CI is not something completely new for us because uh, Zool CI works in Fedora for, for pull requests in Fedora Pagor. And we are actually reusing most of the configuration uh, which uh, Zool team did for uh, Fedora CI. And we mostly taking uh, what uh, the, the jobs and, and the configurations and the setup uh, as is from, from Fedora and, and uh, building on top of that. The second thing which we uh, consider is the possibility to test um, merge requests via additional CI systems. I will talk more about additional CI systems when we, once we talk about the gating part, but um, the idea will, will be uh, the same here. So um, when merge request is created, there is event trigger it on message bus, which saying like merge request is available for testing. And then uh, consumers of a Fedora message bus can listen to these events and can trigger their own tests and then contribute test results to this merge request. And uh, we can then uh, use the external test results also to uh, verify the merge request, to, uh, see the impact and to uh, have a conversation about it. Both of these items, as I said, is a work in progress. Zool is very close to be done, but uh, yeah, this is currently on the demo level on the demo repository. But I would already encourage everyone to check the logs and, and, and see how it works. Zool is actually quite a nice system. But uh, let's now talk about the gating and uh, part, part and the um, process which happens after we build the package. 
So on the pipeline diagram, I showed you the idea how it works. Let me maybe go uh, yeah, back to it. So uh, once the package is built, we tag it with, with a gate tag and we, we uh, pass it through the steps. This is how it works in RHEL. This is how it works in CentOS Stream. But in fact, it works in CentOS Stream and RHEL together and at the same time. So this is very different from what we had when we were uh, like working with Fedora ELN or where we, when we were working uh, with Fedora 34 during a bootstrap phase. This uh, is, um, it, it is mm, synchronized not on the level of a commit of a code into the sources, but it's synchronized on every step of a gating and testing and verification process. So how it works. A uh, rel developer merges the merge request into the uh, repository and uh, initiates the build of these sources for the CentOS stream. At the same time, the automation starts, which uh, builds the same sources, but now for a rel internal infrastructure. So we get two binary packages built from the same source, one lands in Koji in the gate tag of a CentOS stream, and one uh, lands in internal RHEL build system in the gate tag of RHEL. Then we run tests. We run tests for CentOS uh, package, and we run tests for RHEL package. And then we summarize the test results of uh, CentOS package and RHEL package, uh, take a some of it, and we uh, let both packages through to the next step only if both tests are passing. So if CentOS package doesn't pass its own test, RHEL package also considered to be uh, gated and stopped by the gate. If uh, RHEL package doesn't pass its own test, CentOS package also is not going through. So only if both CentOS package passes its, its part of the testing, and rel package passes its, its own part of the testing, only together we can go through the next step. And the same for the second stage where we have candidate dependent tra transition. Again, this verification is summarized and uh, packages in CentOS stream and rel only go to the next step together at the same time. So this gives us the synchronization on, on the level of um, build on the level of test, and it also synchronizes the build route for us. This is a new thing uh, for CentOS again, because previously uh, CentOS had to maintain uh, uh, rebuild packages after long after they were built in RHEL and uh, retracking all like the, the order of builds of RHEL was almost impossible. So there was always a difference in the state of a build road, uh, some sort of difference, and it was really hard to avoid it. But currently, with this setup of CentOS stream, build route of CentOS stream and build route of RHEL are actually synchronized at the same time, which give us much better alignment between the binary packages which we are getting through this process. Now, uh, this is the plan. Let's uh, see what works and what not. <clears throat> so what works? RHEL internal tests are already enabled, not, not all of them yet, because we are in pre-release development and we haven't uh, fully stabilized it, uh, the system. But uh, RHEL tests are already running. CentOS stream, test, uh, CentOS stream 9 packages are already gated on RHEL 9 test results. So in this process, the uh, red part of the passing check is already acting and it's already testing the CentOS stream uh, updates. Unfortunately, the CentOS part of this is not yet ready. We're working on this, but um, this requires some more time on uh, setting up the gating infrastructure on the CentOS stream side, which is new for us and uh, we are um, again uh, copying most of the uh, inf uh, inf infrastructure and setup from Fedora but it still needs some tweaking so uh, this is a work in progress we are adding uh, generic tests like the ones which we run in Fedora in the gate which is installability RPM inspect and RPM deployment and also the possibility to uh, add additional CI systems 
in the uh, CI gating step here on that diagram. So um, the first check which we are doing of the center stream, you will be able to contribute external test results into the same center uh, check. And uh, to explain a bit of a background, how this works and how do we allow uh, additional CI systems to operate on uh, CI and gating. This is actually uh, the concept of CI, which we use in Fedora, which we use internally in RHEL, in which we are uh, setting up for CentOS stream. So it is a so-called event-driven CI. It's quite unusual approach to CI, to be honest, and this is a very interesting for me as a continuous integration engineer to uh, topic. And so our CI is driven by messaging and by message bus. How it works? We have a build system, which uh, is Koji in CentOS Stream case. And uh, whenever build system builds a package, it uh, puts this, it uh, tags this package in a gate tag, and then it sends a message to Fedora message bus, which is a public messaging uh, RabbitMQ uh, something. And it sen sends a message that the new update a new package is uh, appears in gate tag and it's ready for testing. Now we have CI systems which listen are listening to this message bus and which gets triggered on these events. So uh, there is CI system which is uh, running installability check. It gets triggered, it runs the installability check, and then it sends the result message of this installability check to with a message bus back in, in Fedora message bus again. And this message is then aggregated in the database of the all test results. But uh, one CI system can serve the installability test, the other CI system can serve the RPM deploying test, the third CI system can do uh, whatever it is, and the fifth CI system, it may be you who is running uh, the, <laughs> the internal test suite somewhere on your own infrastructure in a closed space. We don't control that. But as, as long as you get triggered on the same event and you can send the test result in the same message bus, you can actually interact with the gating and you can participate in this distributed gating setup. Of course, you, there, there will be some requirements that uh, this test result need, needs to be actionable somehow, right? So uh, you cannot just uh, post a label and say the test, my test fails, uh, deal with it, right? You, you need some logging, you need some agreement with package maintainer, how you're going to d help debugging this test case and so on. But this is uh, like technically this is possible and then it is up to discussion with him package, it can be enabled on a per pack component per package level, uh, how uh, the packager can uh, deal with this test results and how you can help packager to navigate through this CI testing and uh, to debug it, to understand the, to uh, decide whether this test result should be blocking of an update or not. But again, like if you maintain some specific interesting uh, complex infrastructure. You don't have to open it to participate in testing of a center stream. You can do the testing, but then you need to provide the logs and data and you can contribute the test results to a message bus to become part of the uh, center stream CI. And uh, yeah, this uh, basically describes the same thing. Uh, the update, the subscription to a message bus, and so on. And uh, I added some links for the actual example of a message because messages are already available in, uh, in the message bus. You can already do that. What is currently missing is uh, the parts of a, of a gating framework uh, which uh, show uh, the results already available. Uh, what miss, missing, uh, we're, we're missing the kind of aggregated data. If, you, if uh, you're familiar with Fedora um, project, then 
both he works as such when it shows the status of the current of the current status of the package and in which tags it's it's tagged and which test it's waits for. So this system is being developed. We will be uh, calling it CI dashboard from CentOS stream and it will show like the NVR, the package and the test results for it. So you can interact with this. But the uh, like the message bus is already there. Messaging is already there. So if you want to start participating in and building your CI systems, you can already do that. We just need some more time to have a nice uh, shiny uh, page with the, all the test results uh, back one, uh, for everyone to see. And yeah, as I said many times, you can do exactly the same things in Fedora. And in Fedora, we already like have all these missing pieces and, 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 and gaps are more or less closed. So if uh, you want to start how to connect these systems together, you can already start in Fedora or you can do it in Sandra Stream. And like the bonus point, if you do it in both places, because why not? And like Fedora is a future Sandra Stream anyway. So, uh, What's next? As I said, like we have many plans, everything is in progress and uh, we would love to uh, be helpful and <laughs> and uh, participate and inter some things which we need to learn how to do better. Uh, I do plan an article on blog center as org which describes some of those plans. And once Zool will be ready, we will probably announce it there. The documentation and code for CI infrastructure, Zool and jobs and uh, all the rest of it is going to be public under CI CD namespace under center stream under Red Hat on gitlab.com. Uh, it's, I think it's currently almost empty. We have RPM inspect data CentOS package there for RPM inspect test, but, uh, and, and Zool, uh, but we will be adding more. And uh, I'm actually considering whether it is worth it to set up CentOS stream CI SIG. So I would uh, love to see your feedback on this. Um, do you think it's worth it? Uh, and how should we organize it better and, and um, how to proceed? So. Uh, this is it from me, and uh, thank you everyone for being here, and uh, let's check for questions. Okay, the question is about uh, CI tests for all CentOS res results, if, for all CentOS releases in the past were public, with nine, will the new test suit will be also something that community members can contribute to. So that's a very good question. And I uh, I should probably add this information in this slide deck somewhere someday. Um, so how the tests are actually defined. So the uh, if you look at this installability RPM deplint and RPM inspect tests, these are open source generic tests, which we already run in Fedora, so we are fully open. Uh, if we are talking about additional testing, um, we have various types of test systems, and uh, these systems play in different uh, infrastructures, and uh, not of all of them are public. So we have one uh, large option, which is called uh, DISGIT tests. So the tests can be defined directly in the DISGIT repository. So they are going to be public for everyone. And there is currently initiative in uh, Red Hat and RHEL, which is called upstream first for tests. So that uh, the effort to develop uh, things in upstream extends to test, uh, test code. And uh, you may you may see this in Fedora uh, this Git repository already, but also you will see this in CentOS Stream more and more that uh, functional integration tests for packages are actually open sourced and upstreamed and put in the this Git repository of the package. So these tests will be available for everyone, and we will run them for CentOS Stream part in public infrastructure. So the the test results will also be visible for everyone. There still could be some tests which we run on internal infrastructure which are not uh, 
do, dealing with centrous uh, parts and uh, something which is not yet op open sourced properly, something which is uh, uh, some manual testing or whatever. So there, there are some reasons why uh, certain test suits still will be uh, internal, but the results of them will still be gating for CentOS stream. Now, your question uh, actually about QA CI tests for all CentOS releases in the past, this is a different type of test because this is uh, the CentOS QA part at the very end, which happens when uh, we decide if the repository and the images should be published to the mirrors and delivered to the actual users. This part, uh, I think it doesn't change. I, I actually haven't worked with this part myself, so I'm mostly focused on the package level uh, testing, but from my understanding, uh, this, this, is, uh, this should work as it works for CentOS 8 and uh, the test should run there and the results should be public and, and everything should be the same as, as it is for every CentOS release. So we're not losing that part. We're just adding a whole lot of new tests, which were partially uh, internal, uh, and we are adding this whole thing in the package level CI, but the post, um, post compose uh, uh, tests are still there and they're not going anywhere. I hope I answered this right. So, uh, will the CI run across all architectures? Uh, we do need to run it on all architectures. There are some limitations. So again, like we have this distributed CI approach. So some of CI systems may run on one architecture. So other CI systems may run on another. Uh, the, in the end, all the test results are going to be combined and, and the decision will be made all together. So we do extend uh, our CI systems to use at least ARM and we, will, we plan to like get better support for more architectures. But if you take a look at this first, this uh, Zool uh, pipeline, then it is only x86 right now. It's just because it's the first step. We need to like move in steps. We're not doing like one huge uncovering. We, we, were, we are working on this and we're adding well, pieces one by one. So Neil uh, asking, would it be possible for uh, special interest groups to take advantage of this new CI infrastructure? I think that uh, like every special interest group of CentOS should eventually become the additional CI system voting on CentOS packages. I think it's like a very reasonable thing to do. You are establish a CentOS SIG as something which builds on top of the current CentOS stream and you don't want CentOS stream to break your foundation on which you build your uh, special interest group packages and, and, and additional things. So. Uh, ideally, you should have some sanity check for every CentOS update, uh, which shows that the uh, work which a uh, special interest group is doing is not broken by this update. Maybe you don't need to run it for like 3000 packages every time, but you may define a certain subset of packages, which is interesting for this particular use case which is uh, maybe uh, done by uh, using content resolver. Uh, again, for people who work with ELN, you're probably familiar with this, uh, but uh, also like in CentOS, for CentOS folks, it may be interesting. What Content Resolver does is like you can define a small list of packages you're interested in, uh, you call it workload, and then Content Resolver resolves the dependencies of this workload against the CentOS uh, Compose. And you get a full list of things which you need to care about if you want to care about this workload of yours. And this will probably be your list of what things you need to watch in center stream and things you, you want to participate in to test uh, on, on top of, uh, to, to test these things. The second part of this question would be, can we use Zool CI to test the work done by the uh, special interest groups themselves? 
This is an interesting question. I don't have the answer right now. So uh, generally, Zool folks are very, uh, very helpful. They want to cover as much as possible with Zool testing. And uh, I personally like uh, absolutely like this project and it's, uh, I think it's nicely done, but it will uh, come, of course, into the question of resources and uh, resources, uh, meaning compute resources. And this should be some conversation of, uh, for CentOS project as, as a project, uh, how to, uh, where to find those resources, how, how to spend them on on SIG and so on. So, technically, there is no reason why. Zool uh, uh, cannot test, for example, uh, s s packages from special interest groups. It's just a matter of uh, which infrastructure to use for that and, and how to deal with this. So uh, another question. It seems that we'll, uh, we'll not have to host the infra for the nine stream tests like we do for the other releases, including a, a stream. So uh, this is where I think we need to, again, talk about which test we, we mean. So uh, merge request test for central stream will be taken care of by Zool folks. Package level gating test will be taken care of by uh, us as we will be using uh, the testing farm backend for running tests and we will be hosting that and testing, we will be using testing farm as a service for this. But uh, the part about CentOS QA, the post uh, compose checks, I'm still like not sure uh, who and, 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 and how should manage that. And um, yeah, my, my idea was that it, it should be preserved as it, as it was in uh, CentOS 8 and uh, earlier, but we can discuss that in more details. Okay, so any other questions or we can just move to hallway track and continue there. <laughs> so yeah, I will be working with this uh, next steps and uh, I'll be uh, hearing from you all your feedback and, and suggestions are well, welcome. Thank you so much, Alexandra. And uh, we will have a short break before the next and final session of the day. Thank you all for attending and for your questions. And uh, as Alexandra said, please uh, join us in the hallway track if you have any further questions and want to discuss for the next 20 minutes or so. Thank you very much. <laughs>